G'day everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Australian Property Investment Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Christie David, and I run a mortgage broking business called Atelier Wealth. Uh, quite selfishly, I'm going to put on the record that I get to speak to game changers in our industry. So thought leaders and people who are what I call best in breed. And I get a lot out of these conversations. And uh, and in turn, we want to pass and share that knowledge on with a lot of our clients and a lot of our listeners as well. Today, I'm joined in the studio by uh, a name that's well known in real estate. I'm talking about Matthew Everingham from Richard Matthews Real Estate. So director and auctioneer. And today, we're going to lift the hood on all things auctions because the amount of times we have clients that are going to auction and I've been there as well with those pre-auction nerves, uh, the mountain of questions about what happens and it's, I guess it's the fear of the unknown when you're heading into an auction. But you've got to think there's another side to the auction as well which is the vendor and managing the vendor as well. So it's not only the buyer that's going through it, it's the seller that's going through similar nerves as well. So today, I want to welcome you into the show. G'day, how you doing? Thank you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Nice welcome. Hey, You've not, talked it up. Not at all, <laughs> man. I haven't even gone into your accolades even. Uh, I'm talking about top 100 real estate. I'm talking about rate your agent accolades as well. Now, I, I, I don't see you even flinching an eyelid because that's not the reason that you would do it, right? The no. accolades come from what I call sustained success in your in your line of work. Is that I think in our business, yeah. I mean, if you do the right thing by people, things will come to you. I Spot mean, on. I've been doing this for 22 years. Yeah. So, and would you do straight to go out of high school, straight to become a real estate agent because yeah. you haven't even got a single grey hair on your head, mate? <laughs> I was uh, just about to turn 18, so yeah. I've given away my age early here. <laughs> uh, there's a few greys that just were well, 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 uh, well Is that kids in. or is that work? Which one's it going to uh, be? We'll say work. <laughs> A <laughs> uh, bit of both, but um, yeah, straight out of high school into into real Fantastic. estate and yeah, so real estate's your world, mate. This is what you've known. Yeah, and it's a rewarding industry, isn't it? Just it is. Yeah, it's it's uh, hard work, but you know, if you do the right thing, it's it's very yeah. rewarding. Absolutely. Our lines of work. It's not about the loan. It's not about the sold sticker. Uh, ultimately, is um, called a cliche, but it is a people business. People Absolutely. buying the home of their dreams, buying that investment property of their dreams, yeah. it changes their lives. Right. So we're talking about a different course of life. People get that home, and it changes. I think Where it's often live. the biggest yeah. decision that somebody's going to make in their life, you know, Absolutely. whether it's their home or an investment, they're both huge, huge purchases. Yeah, and yeah. It's a privileged position to be in, to be right. able to help somebody through that process, whether you're on the buying or, or vendor side. Yeah. And often it's emotional, you know, from, from both angles. And mm. I think it's good talking to somebody like you about it from, from I suppose, the auction perspective, because I think there's yeah. a, a real fear out there or a nervousness yeah. around auction. And I understand the anxiety of it, but yeah. you know what, if you have good agents represent you from an owner's perspective, and from a buying perspective, you have good agents that communicate well with you, mm. I think those barriers come down. Um, and I think realistically, something like this will hopefully give people a really good insight in to how it works maybe behind the scenes a little bit, um, get yeah. rid of a little bit of the stigma. Spot on. Um, and give you some tips. Yeah. And that's what we really want. We help people getting auction ready and yeah. understanding how it works and the mechanics of it. So we'll come to that in a second. But before we do, yeah. what I call the three Ps, a little bit of ASOF personally, professionally, and uh, a bit about your property journey as well, if you may. Yeah. Okay. Personally, uh, I think I've given away my age. Yeah. So I've been an agent <laughs> for 22 years. Yeah. Um, lead the team uh, alongside Richard Bainey, my prince, co-principal at Richard Matthews. There's 44 of us in the team. Isn't that incredible? Yeah, it's uh, pretty awesome from two guys who started just the two of us 11 years ago. Yeah. Um, very small office next door, interestingly, to where we are now. Um, and it's a reminder of where you've started and where you've gone to. Well, right? everyone asks us, how did you come up with a name? Well, it's pretty easy, Richard <laughs> yeah. and Matthew. Um, but it was actually over a very quiet beer in a hotel in Leichhardt. Um, nice. And it took us about 30 seconds. So that was the beginning of Richard Matthews. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and personally, I'm a dad, two kids, 13 and 11 year old. Um, so they often are out there with me on auction weekend. We auction a lot on Sundays. So yeah, right. Josh and Ava will come along on a Sunday and part of the team now. Is, I mean, Maybe by, not, I don't know by choice, <laughs> but by uh, necessity. But they're going to grow up not fearing real estate. They're going to no. grow up understanding, one, the process. They're going to grow up with this being part of their, their oh, lives yeah. and their world. I mean, that's a, that's a fortunate position for them to be in as well. I like the fact that they get to come out and see our clients as well because yeah. it breaks down that that awkwardness. I think, I don't know, I think when, when people think auction, they think they're going into this arena where it's oh, just like on. a gladiator's arena. It's not like that. I mean, obviously the agent's out there to get the best result for their vendor. That's that's who we work for. Absolutely. But the reality is it, it, it's done in a professional way, great transparency, 
And most of the work from an auction perspective is done before. So yeah. it, it drops that back a little bit. Perfect. Let's start there then. So yeah. you've, you've got auction, which is typically D-Day. Well, we don't want to use any more <laughs> analogies, but we'll kind of go, look, that's, that's the moment of truth from the buyer and yeah. the seller. And again, for a lot of real estate agents as well. But you mentioned the amount of pre-work yeah. and, and the run in the lead in, so a campaign, for example. So take us through, and maybe we'll start with, why would someone go to auction yep. versus private treaty, for example? Where's that decision made? The decision is made well before we get to auction day. So often we're sitting in an owner's living room. It's yep. probably you know six to eight weeks before that property is going to be auctioned. Yeah that that decision's made. Um, look, I think across Sydney, it's most common. I'd say mm. probably 80% of properties will go to auction out there in the market. I think the biggest reason or the biggest reasons is that it's a defined period of time. So it's okay. a four week campaign and everyone knows, the owner knows that's the date that it finishes if it sells at auction and the buyers know that there's a decision that needs to be made by that day. And I think from an owner's perspective, it's to bring everybody to the table in a time frame. Yeah, okay. Um, I suppose the flip side is every owner wants to get as much as they can. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I've got to say the stigma around auction v for sale, some buyers will say, oh, you know, we're, we're more comfortable with a for sale scenario. Yeah. The truth is auction is very open and transparent. You're right there registered bidders, yes. people have provided their ID, they're in front of you, your competition's there. They're not the agent on the phone saying, hey, there's another buyer that's showing a bit of interest here, what do you want to do? Of which you can question whether that buyer is there or not. Mm. You know? And I suppose auction is very open and transparent. So I think the first thing that people have got to realise is that the decision's made because for everybody, it's done. It's open. Well said. Yeah. Well said. So, you know, we've had a few opens, for example, you start to yeah. see people coming through it, now we're going into that Probably that, the week of is generally where they're starting to build, right? There's momentum. Yeah, there are people going, can we negotiate pre-auction, for example? Yep. You're then going, look, we're going we're to take this to auction because you've had almost a window of time to make offers and now it's leaving to the last moment. But yep. there's mechanics that need to happen. There's building and pests that need to be inspected. There's a contract to sell that needs to be agreed upon. There's the deposit checks that need to be kind of drawn and, and ready for- uh, Well, there's actually a bit of a, uh, uh, it, we'll, we'll touch on that part yeah. just briefly, because I think a lot of people get stressed about this side that's of it. That's exactly because right. Because that's our world where they're going, I need to get the checks look nice. So good agents often will, will have a, a pre-done pest and building report Beautiful. of which there's a link. It's relatively cheap to buy that initial report yeah. um, and they're available. So you don't have yeah. to go through the whole running around and good agents will partner up with someone like Before You Bid or, yeah. or a similar sort of company, have that available and the reports are there. Yeah. So firstly, if, if you're partnering with someone like Richard Matthews uh, or you're looking at our properties, talk to us about that because it's something that will significantly cut back your costs leading into an auction yeah. and also the headaches around the it. Time. Yeah, the time. Big, big time. time. Yep. Most people don't have a checkbook anymore. Correct. Um, <laughs> and most people don't have the limit on their account to be able to do a transfer on That's the day. exactly right. They're two basic things, but they do create a lot of angst for people. Yeah. And um, we have a bit of a fact sheet when people come through our properties. So for a buyer, all of this information is there. It's very well laid out. Awesome. What you can do on auction days, we have a, a thing called auction pay yeah. um, and we can debit your account. So there's no need to be worried about the whole checkbook scenario well, or that, running to the bank yeah. and getting a bank check, which then you've got to return. And we've taken all of that away now. And the other angst is they're going to see what my, because it's a 10% check, right? So they're going, hang on, they're going to see openly what I think I'm going to buy right. this property for on the right. check. And they're going, well, I don't want to show my cards. I don't want to kind of show them after the auction. I was willing to go higher as There's well. There's a lot of that. <laughs> and, and, and look, it, it's it's just an antiquated way to do it. Um, yeah. And good agents will have that facility there. And I and I think the, um, the reality is it's very much account details you press a couple of buttons, it sends you a receipt and it debits your account. Excellent. It's that simple. And it costs 85 cents. So it's As a lot like cheaper a than- Deposit bond or- Deposit yeah. bond, which you're paying probably five, $600 for, whatever, Correct. that's actually your world. I shouldn't tell this. Oh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> it's part of it because, I mean, it generally yeah. it happens the day before they're going- oh, It's and a so, mad rush, right? Right, and so we're gonna auction this weekend. I was like, guys, when did you know about this auction? Why aren't we speaking about it beforehand? And so, yeah, I don't wanna sound like You'd I've gotta be my bonnet, but I'm like, you saw the open, yeah. you went to it, you should have had the contract to sell reviewed, you should have gone through the building pester, any of those yeah. due diligence parts should have been done well beforehand. Yeah. The day, two days beforehand, 
why are we stressing ourselves out when we've had all this time up our sleeves? And you probably get that as well at your all, end going, all last guys, minute. why are we having this conversation? And you're not in the right headspace as well. Well, so I think a lot of people wait for that last moment. I suppose they probably don't want to invest a great deal of money in those pest and building reports or, or check preparation three or four weeks before. Um, but my counter to that, and sorry to jump in, is mm. but if you want it, and if this is the home you want, yeah. then why aren't we putting all that energy to getting it? I because think you're going to try and say, like, oh, Can I tell you what yeah, the main reason is? I think mostly because they're dealing with an agent who maybe doesn't give them a lot of feedback or communication mm. or they feel like unapproachable. Um, yeah, okay. I think good agents in today's market, and this is where it's changed from you know 20 or 30 years ago yeah. where it was very much this you know, um, arm's length, we don't want to talk to them, we don't want to give much information away. And I understand, look, there's still that, you know, vendor wants this, buyer wants this, and it, a good agent will communicate what you need to do. Yeah, yeah. If you're forthright with the agent leading into the auction, firstly, you're going to get a good, honest account of where it's at. Love that. This is the interest it's it's got. We What we can't control is what someone will do on auction day. And, mm. and the truth is, if you get two buyers who are emotive about it and somebody wants to pay 10% over what we feel it's going to sell for, yeah. that we can't control. Yeah. And to be fair, there's no reason why you want to control that. I mean, if somebody really wants that home, it's their family home or a great investment or whatever it may be, yeah. You want that openness to it. That's fair, yeah. And I can tell you, leading into an auction, when the pre-auction off- offers happen, often people think, oh, you know, I'll, I'll buy it pre-auction and there's none of that. No, because the agent's got to go back to everybody else that's shown a level of interest and give them the opportunity to buy. So it could turn into that anyway. Which is the same respect you want if someone else is making the offer, but you really want it and you want to have that right of refusal. And at least I know that we had an opportunity to make an offer or a counter offer well, yeah. before it got I mean, sold underneath us and then going, well, the agent didn't even call right? Yeah. And how many times do I hear from buyers that are dealing with an, an agent that I think is often, you know, let's say unethical or mm. just really not forthright in their communication. And they're just trying to get the sale done. Right? Is, well, they'll see it Friday night, the day before the auction. Yeah. And there's a sold sticker up and it's come off real estate.com yes. or domain. <laughs> and it's like, where's that gone? We didn't get a call. Yeah. Um, people won't experience that with us. We're very open and transparent about that. And I think that's what people should be expecting if they're dealing with a good agency. Yeah. I mean, you have to understand that you're one agent in one area, for example, with your with your listing, but you know, you can't control the event because you've got your listings, but yeah. other agents, and that's again, it speaks it speaks to your agency being recognised amongst you know the top tier in Australia. That's no that's no easy feat, but it's off the back of this ethos that you guys live in. Well, I think we try and make it as fair as possible for everyone. We're not favouring anybody. Mm. I mean, we're not choosing who buys it. We're giving the market every opportunity, and of course, with that comes disappointment. I mean, mm. I can't say to you somebody who misses out at an auction or pre auction or if it's for sale. Any of those scenarios won't be disappointed, but ultimately, there's always there's always a point where somebody's going to go a bit further. Yeah. The the beauty of auction is that it allows the market to dictate that competition. It's not the agent picking Johnny from down the road because you yeah. know he prefers Johnny to buy it. It's the market dictating who buys it. That's fair. The auction facilitates that. Um, it's a fair and open way. Yeah. It's, I, I think I urge people to think about it more that way. <laughs> um, and if it doesn't sell at auction, I challenge you post auction to try and negotiate. It's a lot harder than right there and then under auction conditions. Yeah. Because it's not transparent. It's not open. It's not people in front of you. Absolutely. I mentioned before that you know, uh, we went through it. So we bought our yep. family home you know, a little while ago. Went to auction, even with all my relationships. I uh, had a yep. buyer's agent in the industry. I was like, no, nah, it was going to auction. <laughs> uh, so, you know, the day before. That means I'm you're like, buying a good one, and I that's, reckon. That, that's exactly how we looked at it. We, we reframed how we went about it going, yep. well, let's see. Let's see what the market thinks it's worth. And this could go two ways, yep. right? It could work in our favor. It, it could really, it could literally just you know, balloon out of our control as well. Um, but you know what? You give yourself every chance to buy it. That's exactly it. Yeah. That's, and I've gone to auction. I've bought myself at auction. Um, yep. I understand it from the flip side. So we're not immune to this, right? Being no. in the industry. <laughs> and, and, and I've... And I I think any good agent has probably gone through that process of buying property, selling property. I've done both. And Mm. look, you really uh, have a good understanding of what people's 
I suppose pain points are. And empathy. Um, yeah. You have to be empathetic to yeah. it because it's emotional. Um, right. You know, every every auction I do, I'll go up to the owner, but I thank them for their bidding at mm. the end of an auction. But I'll also go up to them and say, look, I'm, I'm sorry you missed out today. Thank you for your competition because they have competed for it. Um, but the good thing about our agents then is that I know for a fact that the call that afternoon to those mm. people, uh, hey, I know you missed out on Smith Street today, but I can, I can tell you we've got X, Y, and Z coming to market or trying to put them into something that's maybe pre, pre-market as well um, exactly. because it's relationship. Yeah. Um, we've had four weeks of talking to these people. We've found out what they want. And if people are open with us and they do give us a bit of information, we're going to help them. It's a lot easier for both. Yeah, correct. For both. So let's go to the day of. So we're yep. kind of, we've done we've done the you know the campaign leading into it. Now we're on the day of. So you turn up, you're yeah. registered. So I mean, hygiene, hygiene, <laughs> exactly right. The 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 minutes can feel yep. like hours. You know, while you're waiting for that ten thirty auction, or if it's in yep. the evening, it's even worse. You got to try and keep yourself mentally occupied as well. Yep. Um, but yeah, on the day of, so you do you know your last walk through, for yep. example. Obviously, everyone's sussing everyone out. You can kind of feel the tension building in the air a little the bit. Mexican standoff. <laughs> and everyone's it? watching. Uh, and then yeah, the auctioneer rolls out, and yep. I, I guess you got the gift of the gab as well, right? So you got it's that it's that that preamble leading up to it, where you're doing that final. Well, I think uh, it's uh, for an auctioneer. Um, it, it's it's in that moment you feel mm. everyone's energy, nervous energy Absolutely. often. Remember, an owner's in the same boat as a buyer. So yeah. they're nervous. Yeah. The buyers are nervous. And then obviously we're in the hands of the buyers. Yeah. Um, so I can say a whole heap of great stuff about this <laughs> property, but ultimately I have to then throw it over to the buyer. Um, and look, I think the hardest part, I would say the hardest part of an auction Week in, week out, and you know, we're auctioning 10, 15, 20 mm. properties on a Saturday and Sunday is that start. Okay. So it seems to be that everyone's reluctant about the starting bid, the opening bid. Yeah. And you know, we call for an opening bid or offer, and, and look, it's this, it's like the minute silence. Yeah. It's this wait. And I often say through an auction, it's like, I've just given you this wonderful spiel about this great property. And then nobody wants to bid. Mm. It's very common. Um, I think everyone's afraid to to try that opening bid. Um, if you've had good communication with the agent through the campaign, you've got a pretty fair idea of where they'll look at starting. And yeah. I'd ask that question: Where do you think the auctioneer would look at taking a starting bid? Be open about it. Ask mm. the question so that you don't go out there and you know you put in a bid of one point five million when the auctioneer is not going to accept anything under one point. Seven. Yeah. Um, so I think sometimes people feel a little bit funny about that. So through the campaign, ask the agent that. So when you get to auction, you can pop that That's card up and you can get, I would think, get on the front foot when you're bidding. Um, and we were talking the other day about this, you know, is it the sniper that comes at the end and <laughs> buys it? What is um, that auction strategy, right? Oh, uh, look, and, and you know what? I get asked this, I reckon every day I have this question, yeah. you know, how do we go and bid? Um, I, and I always had the same answer. Look, my clients will all tell you, and my philosophy is pretty clear. If somebody's got deeper pockets, it doesn't matter what I can tell you to do, mm. they're going to pay more money, they're going to pay more money. But what you can do to give yourself the best chance, I think, is get out on the front foot, be aggressive in your bidding. And what I I mean by that is that when an auction's going, and I see this firsthand when I'm auctioning, yeah. or when I'm not auctioning and I'm watching how the the, the auction uh, plays out, yeah. is that if you bid like you've got no end in sight and your bids are quick, don't wait for the auctioneer to go first, second, third, and then make your bid. Because when you do that and you make a low bid, all that's doing is giving your competitors time to think about their next bid. And it's basically getting them invested that they've almost bought this property. Mm, Does that make sense? That's a really good point. So you think about it, first, second, third, the person who's got the highest bid at that point think, we've got this, we're close to getting this. And they could be pretty much out. And you go then do a $1,000 bid and they're like, oh, well, they were almost finished, let's go again. But if you come back and they've made a bid of 1,750 and you go 1,760 straight away, they're thinking that you may have no end in sight. And often psychologically, it's like, you know what, they're just gonna keep going. Mm. And I hear it, I hear the crowd saying, I hear it, my agent saying to them, you don't know that they've got more money. They could be bidding strongly to a point and then that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my advice is get out strong. Um, yeah. And I know I know people think let's hold back and wait for the auctioneer to cycle through the calls. 
I promise you something, it, it will help my kids on a Saturday or Sunday <laughs> night because I won't be able to scream um, <laughs> and, and they'll love it. My voice will be done, yeah. but it probably won't help you buy the property. Um, so be aggressive in your bidding and yeah. show people that you're there to buy. It's a psychological game um, and, is, and bid in strong increments. That's what I would do. Which is, again, you, you speak to agents or you, you watch and it's like the silent assassin. I think we call it a sniper, they call it a silent every assassin. Week. I get it every option. Right, and it's like I'll just wait till the very end in the shadows at the very back and I'll just come out and blow yeah. everyone out. I feel like that. that's the exception to the rule. The rule is generally come in strong, be confident. You, know, you, you, you want to have that number inside your head before you get there yeah. so you're not kind of having that, that yeah. side chatter amongst and yourself. I think it's playing that, games. Right? Yeah. Or the often question will be, are we on the market and selling? Now, mm. the misconception during auction, and I'll put it to rest for everyone now because they ask this question, does the auctioneer have to say you're selling? No. The auctioneer can very well say first, second, third, done. Yeah. And they've never mentioned the word we're on the market and selling. And some mm. auctioneers will have that strategy. Some owners will ask me to do it too. And they'll say, look, Matt, we don't want you calling it on the market. We yeah. want you to say at the beginning that there'll be no announcement of when we're selling. Beautiful. The property's here to be bought today. And when you call it three times, you risk that property being sold. Uh, and I've been to auctions um, where by, we, we, we didn't know if it was selling or it wasn't, and they missed the opportunity to buy. Mm -hmm. So please um, get on the front foot. It's Look, it doesn't help you by holding back. I, I really genuinely believe that. I, I know the strategy. I understand what people do and it's like, we'll get back. You watch a good buyer's agent bid. Yes. This is an example, right? You watch a really good buyer's agent bid and I think they're, they're great at what they do because they're on the other side which of the fence. Which is my exact next question, which is, right? um, yeah. And they'll go aggressively at the beginning. Correct. And you watch them get out from the front and they'll know where they're going to open the bidding because they've had a conversation with me yeah. beforehand and said, look, where are you going to look at a starting bid? And I'll be very transparent and say, look, if we don't have a number here and above, I'm going to call a vendor bid, which you don't want. You don't want me to start at high. Hmm. You'd rather get involved, lead the auction off. Unfair advantage to have a buyer's agent, in your opinion? Uh, no, not unfair advantage. Okay. Um, I mean, it depends on your nature. Uh, would I use a buyer's agent bid? No, but uh, but I'm familiar with the process and yeah. I know what I'm doing. Um, if you're not confident, are they good at what they do? The right buyer's agent? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, most buyer's agents will have some form of relationship with the agent agency yeah. auctioneer. Yeah. And when we say relationship, it'll be on a professional basis, you know? Absolutely. But you've dealt with each other in the past. Oh, yeah. are far too small. You generally know who they are. But they also yeah. know They also know how we operate. So yeah. we're transparent with them. They're transparent back with us. And the reality is they know how to bid mm. um, and they'll get out aggressively. So okay. they'll, you watch how they operate and, and it's rare that a buyer's agent will hold back and and do nothing. Yeah, okay. They'll show that they're there to buy. Yeah, and, and that's I, I feel like for a lot of our clients, sometimes they're turning up first time to an auction for yep. the one that they really want. I was 100%. like, guys, practice makes perfect. Even if you're going in an observer context, see how an auction plays out. See who the auctioneer is. Like True. watch, I even would. watch on YouTube. And I know that you've know you you've worked with Tom Panos, for example, and you're yep. part of the community there. Yep. I tell all our clients, if you're not going to go out, at least watch Tom Panos's videos on, on YouTube about There's how so the auction There's technology plays now um, where you can literally, well, you go on to richardmatthews.com.au yep. under the video tab yep. and there's auction after auction. Beautiful. Some of it's professional footage, which means it's an edited down version for a purpose. Yeah. And some of it's raw. Uh, go onto our social media, go onto Facebook Beautiful. or Instagram and you'll see auctions played out live. There's no editing. It's shot on an iPhone. Yeah. And it will show you how we operate. Um, and if you're nervous about it, we'll, we, we always have the ability to have an agent paired up with every buyer. We've got a big team. Yeah. Um, and we do that so that buyers don't feel like they have to be the one at the back calling out that bid. The agent will call out the bid for you to make life much easier. You'll feel less worried or watch this podcast. <laughs> Listen so to this podcast. Why, is that why agents, because I've, I've often wondered that. I'm like, why is the agent standing next to someone when they're Good trying question. to bid? Yeah. yeah. Um, I think people fear sometimes the agents, you know, going to pressure you to make a bid. Yeah, yeah. Look, they're going to encourage you uh, tactic wise. Um, if I'm not auctioning and I'm standing next to a buyer, my advice always to them is very much the same. If you're still involved here, tell me that you're, you're not at your limit and I'll tell you how I would bid if I were buying it. And it would be aggressively. It'd be like, Next bid, next bid. And if I'm going to bid an auction for a friend um, outside of our company, outside of what we mm. will do, I'll mirror that exact same tactic. You know, I'll know their limit uh, and I'll bid strongly to it. Um, yeah. And you know what? Does emotion then kick in where you feel like right at the end, you know, 
guys, if we go that extra five grand, you might secure this. Or I've seen, it's an auction um, in Strathfield, went for almost an hour. It was at the wow. beginning of this really wet patch we've had. And I remember it well, because it's probably close to 400 people. It's a big home, but close to 400 people inside. Insane. And the last bid was bought by $1,000 at 7.8 million. Wow. So $1,000 separated those two bidders at an almost $8 million purchase price. Mm. So that $1,000 often can make the difference. And I was watching what the buyers were doing, I could tell we were down to the nitty gritty. And at almost $8 million, $1,000 bought it for this family. Um, so, you know, sometimes you've got to flex a little bit too. Yeah. If you want it. Absolutely. If you want it bad enough. So take me through in the, because uh, we had such really good uh, clearance rates, for example, uh, being yeah. passed in isn't, hasn't been too common, but I mean, it does happen from time to time for a couple of reasons. And maybe I, not in your, maybe not in your domain, but no, you probably see it. You I, see it from I, time I would say if we auction 10 properties on a weekend, you, you can safely say that there's probably two or three that yeah. will pass in and, yeah. and that's totally Appreciate your honesty. Yeah, great. And, and there's, yeah. and there's nobody that can say to you that it's a hundred percent, a hundred percent of the time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and some weekends would be better than others. You know, we've gone 15 out of 15. Yeah. Uh, and, and on other days, you know, we've sold eight out of 15. Mm. You know, it's a, a, a close of course, 50%. Yeah. It's, it's real estate. Um, I can tell you the, and, and from an owner's perspective, um, don't fear a passing because it's part of the process. Sometimes yeah. it doesn't sell at auction day. We had one on Saturday, 22 Henry Street, Ashfield. So it's yeah. an address, it's real, you can Go Google it. it. Yep. Um, it passed in 2,460,000 um, at 11 a.m. on Saturday. Now, uh, by six o'clock that night, Champagne on both sides. Unreal. So yeah. two million five fifty it had sold for, and to be fair, as the agent, we knew that the buyer uh, would pay more. We felt it was worth more, and the owner certainly wanted more out of it. So I think it was just an adjustment from both ends to to meet. Um, I hear a lot of commentary at the moment about the market. What's yeah, the great. market doing? What are clearance rates doing? Yeah. Safe to say, we're in a normal market now. Exactly, and that's what we said. Like you it's can't normal. have. 25% year on year, you can't have 80 something percent clearance rates consistently week in, week out. At some point, like any season, we come right. into maybe an off season, we come into a change and yeah. you could say, look, it's a normal. you call it the rate market, you call it an election, you call it off the back of you know, sustained market success, you call it international travel now back on, which now dollars yeah. are now flowing out of the you know, out of the country, for example. There's that fatigue there's also for people, people coming back in. Great. So there's a bit of a flip side to that too, yeah. I've seen, particularly in my market. Um, I mean, your, your corridor is great for a lot of people re-entering you know, yeah, Australia. Yeah, and, yeah, that really mid, middle of Sydney, you know, Strathfield, yeah. inner west, southwest, yeah. um, real mix of property, lower yeah. end, higher end. Spot on. Um, broad mix. The post-auction side of it mm. is purely because it didn't happen right there and then under auction conditions. Now, I go week in, week out and see buyers who hold back. It's like, well, they're not bidding, so I'm not going to bid. And therefore, we end up with a vendor bid mm. and a passed-in result. I promise you, as a buyer, yeah. it is much harder to negotiate when there's no top bidder than us coming to you and saying, look, you are the top bidder here. We're not at our reserve but we're gonna pass it in your favor and we're gonna give you the first chance to buy this property. Yeah, right. You know? So that buys you front row seats on the plane, if you like, mm. where you get the first chance to buy that property post auction. So that interesting one from the other day was that reserve was obviously a little bit higher, buyer was here, the buyer said, look, I'm the highest bidder, I'll get the first chance to buy it. He didn't buy it straight away post auction. We did go back to the other buyers and it was a negotiation and it was sold that afternoon. Mm. If you don't bid and it's post auction, it can become an auction behind the scenes. Well it's much, much, much harder for you as a buyer yeah. because you've got an agent in one room with a buyer, an agent in another room with a buyer, you've got a, an owner somewhere else and it's not transparent. And I know you think that that gives you control, it's the polar opposite because when it's auction, you can see your other bit of right there. You know, if they've got more money. Oh, you're eyeballing them. You literally can see. I mean, some people have really bad poker faces as well. <laughs> I, w I would want to buy under those conditions personally. Yeah. Um, it's a lot more transparent. Yeah. And it's there and then. And I think as well, if you're a buyer and you've got an owner who's willing to sell on auction day, there's probably an element of, you know, expectation on the owner that, well, okay, let's give them a price now and let's get this done today. Yeah. When that heat comes off, of auction day, the truth is often I see owners' prices move up 
because it's like, well, we haven't sold it today now. It's not auction conditions. Let's just aim for that little bit more now and, mm. and try and get that. Um, so it's it's also a shift from an owner. Yeah. So get your, get on the front foot. Even if you're the only bidder, right there and then, that gives you front row seats to that negotiation. And if you want to buy it, believe me, you're dealing with a good agent. They'll be transparent. They'll be open. This is our reserve and I'll pull it out of my um, mm. jacket and I'll show them. Very transparent about it. This is what the written reserve is. It's not a pretend reserve. It's the reserve that I've had during the auction as my yeah. instructions and that's what we'll use. Yeah. I mean, for you mentioned before, you know, the disappointment for a lot of buyers and, you know, we'll deal with it, um, you know, because we'll work the numbers up. We've got them ready, yeah. for example. You'd so see it. We see it. And, and they yeah, come back and ask for more money often. I, I call it the frustrated the buyer because, you know, yeah. they, they, they want that home in that location. So yeah. why don't we do everything right? And part of our philosophy is I'm telling clients, I'm going, what does that champagne taste like? And like, what do you mean? I'm like, you're a winner. You need to think like a winner. You need to yeah. do what winners do, which is have you engaged the agent? Do you yeah. know, have you researched who the auctioneer is? Have 100%. you watched the videos? Have you done your due diligence? All have you that. turned up on the day, game face on, for example, if you're not confident, have you got a buyer's agent that can maybe do some bidding on your behalf? But then it's also being a graceful loser. If it, you know, if out of your control, yeah. you're right. It wasn't meant to be sometimes and we move onwards. I'll tell you one. something. I think. The, the one thing I want people to get out of today is that if someone's coming to one of my auctions, yeah. you're absolutely welcome to pick up the phone, say, hey, I know you're auctioning you know, this property on Saturday. Yeah. We intend to bid on it. We want to introduce ourselves or make an appointment, pop in and see me, um, or prior to the auction. Often people mm. will do it. And I'm in a lucky position because for me, I'm auctioning for my business. So yeah. I often am involved somehow in the campaign. Um, yeah. I know who the vendor is. I often know a lot of the buyers. It gives me a privileged position because I think the reality is I'm, I'm then familiar with and they feel less guard up. Mm. Um, and that's a good way to be. Um, I'll be very transparent with them. You know, if you're looking to start it, this is where you need to be. I can't tell you the reserve, but you know where the feedback has been. Excellent. You know, the reality is it might get X amount more if there's competition or it might sell in that range. And I think the transparency and the communication is all it is. Uh, and don't be afraid to have that conversation. I'm not going to somehow, you know, say, oh, you, you talk to me during the, the, the pre-auction <laughs> stuff. And it, it will give you the ability to know how I am, yeah. to know how my agents are uh, and, and have good communication. Turning up um, and not showing your cards won't help. I agree. Just one. Yeah. Which is, yeah, it flipped the script because a lot of people play their cards close to their chest. Sure. The agent. And they're not going to tell us the price. Yeah, yeah. I get that. And I'm not going to ask you either. I'm not going to say to you, what's your absolute limit today? Let's be honest. Like, yeah. I mean, there's always that that privacy respected too. And on the flip side, I can't tell you what the owner is going to sell for. That's obviously, you know, confidential at that point. Yeah. Um, but I can tell you the honest feedback, how many we feel we've got competing and you go in there and you have an easier conversation. Yeah. If you want to know what a buyer's agent does or what a broker will do when they mm -hmm. call in, they'll often call on behalf of their clients, say, Excellent. hey, these guys are prepping for- That's exactly production. right. Yeah, yeah. We don't, we're not giving anything away, but no. what we're doing is, again, just trying to create where we're putting our buyer yeah. the best foot forward and going, hey, mate, stand out from the rest of the pack, right? Give yourself every chance to buy it. Yeah. And the reality is having a good, honest relationship with a good agent, somebody who's forthright and upfront with you, mm. will help you much more than having that guarded approach where I don't want to talk to them or give any information. Yeah, yeah. I think people are skeptical of agents because of a small amount that do the wrong thing or past experiences that they've had. Yeah. You know, when I started in real estate in the late 90s, in comparison to today, it's very different. Absolutely. When, yeah. you know, there's not auctioneers getting bids off trees. <laughs> you know, it's registered ID'd bidders who are asked, are you able to pay a deposit today? You're ready to buy. They're people who are competing. It's just transparent. And even we've already got an offer and you're on the phone. It's like, well, you can actually call it out going, well, Absolutely. do you have a legitimate offer in writing? And people can actually see it if they really want to. So yep. there is so much more transparency that works in the buyer's favour, but also for the vendor they know that they've entrusted you, you know, because you're... Yeah. I had an interesting question. This is left field, right? Yeah. Um, 
So when the sold sticker goes up, typically, and this is <laughs> from a client, so I'm like, this is interesting. I haven't had this one before. Yep. Um, when the sold sticker goes up, it's usually the buyers that are there, but they're hang on, they're going, hang on, but they're paid by the vendor. So why, why isn't the vendor in the photo, for example? We do both. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I tell you, it depends on the client. Some of them yeah. are a little bit reluctant to have the photo. Yeah. Um, okay. Others love it. Yeah. <laughs> what we really want is we want both parties to come yeah. into it at that point. And, you know, look, it's an owner who's, celebrating a sale and a buyer who's excited for their purchase. Yep. And I think it's a really good moment at the end where, you know, they're, they're popping the Richard Matthews champagne. Totally. Um, if, if, if they don't want to drink it, um, what we want them to do is spray it on each other and that just creates that <laughs> moment or at least pop the champagne and create that Instagrammable moment. Um, because you know what? That's what you will remember. Mm. Um, w- what's fun is getting the kids involved, getting sold stickers done. Um, you know what? At the end of it, good agents will, will, will have a bit of fun with it and we Absolutely. enjoy it. You know, look, are we going to get out there and, and sort of want to pop champagne with it? Of course, it's a fun moment. Um, in the same token, everyone's a little bit different, but everyone's involved. Now, I can speak from first-hand experience. That moment is etched in our memory. 100%. So us I remember with, those. The, with, with, with the people that sold it, and it's uh, call it good juju or good energy, yeah. right? But it's they lovely. welcomed us and said, look, this is a fantastic home. You're going to make lovely. memories in there. And um, Well, the truth is by that stage, everything's done. It's all yeah. signed. Deposits yeah. are paid. And I think it's really nice from a sale perspective mm. um, when you get somebody who's selling the property, who's had it for X amount of time and whatever yeah. you know reason they're selling, yeah. and somebody who's bought it who's excited to either be moving into it or having it as an investment and getting those people to click. And yeah. I, I, I think that's part of the transparency part. I think some agents are like, well, you know, you don't, don't talk to the owner or the buyer afterwards. After every single auction, I've done this for a lot of years, mm. it's a really good moment when you make that introduction. It's a bit awkward sometimes because no one knows each other yeah. at that stage. <laughs> but it's then on to, you know, how long have you guys been here? And, and what is really lovely is when you go out and pop that sold sticker up, pop the champagne often, and then the neighbours are involved. That's exact next point, which yeah. is that's when you know you've, you bought well and the neighbors so. walking your open arms going welcome to the neighborhood and they introduce yeah. themselves and again we had that moment and you're like um, yeah it just it just reaffirms everything you thought about hey this is our, our new beginning and the neighbors are there before you've even we you know, do it as agents keys. we yeah. invite the neighbors along to the auction we have an on-site that. cafe um so they come out oh, and just create that, that experience <laughs> we're not putting anything in the coffee to make you bit more <laughs> um but it's it's really just it a lot of people say, why do you guys do it? Well, firstly, it invites people to come along and grab a coffee. Yeah. It it, it sets the scene that we are welcoming we're, we're, and we're paying for it. You're not paying for mm-hmm. it. Um, it just creates a nice atmosphere. Um, and then post-auction, when those invited neighbours come along, mm. you have to say, hang around, you'll see who your new neighbours are. Yeah. It's a nice moment. Spot on. It really is. So, so the stigma is not yeah. what you think. It's come to a, a good agent's auctions and you really, really get a feel. Um, I welcome anyone to come along if they want to call me for advice. Love it. Watch these sorts of things because they do help, you know. Oh, beautiful. Mate, really, really great advice. And I, I definitely, I think when we had a chat the other day, I said, look, yep. we're going to get you back on because we've, to- <laughs> we've spoken about the buyer side, yeah. but there's the other side, which is the vendor, the vendor side. side. So if you're going- Very you detailed want conversation sell, and how it comes about to go to auction. Yes. And then the strategies involved behind it. Yeah, yeah. We're giving it away there. We are. We're going to blow this <laughs> wide open. We're going to have to charge for your, um, your time. But I want to say, and this is what we're about because yeah. you've, there's no secrets. No. We want we want people to succeed. We want people to buy those homes. We want, we want it to be done in a way that they enjoy it and not going, yeah. it's a stressful point. It's yeah, yeah there, there is stress. It's the fear oh, of the unknown, like anything the like that. The anxiety yeah. will be there. Yes. I say to every owner, I have these meetings every week pre-auction with our owners. So they're prepared too. Mm. And I'll say the same thing to a buyer. You you will be anxious because you don't know the outcome. Yeah. But the truth is, if you've communicated well, you've had good communication back, you're going in eyes wide open, mm. and then fate will decide where it goes from there. Yeah. But get active, get involved. Love it. Don't be afraid of us. Beautiful. Mate, thank you so much for your <laughs> time and, and sharing your knowledge. Uh, that's Pleasure. that's what we're about here. And uh, like we said, we're so privileged to have guests that come on that are just so open and willing to share because it comes from an abundance mindset. It's like you win, we win, everyone wins, and and, and that's what we're about. So Pleasure. thank you so much. Absolute uh, Pleasure. Thank on. you for having me. No, nah, wonderful. Uh, if you found that helpful, please feel free to reach out, drop us a line, give us a review as well. Um, and until next time, take care.